man. Fix your own. Um, horrible shot. Black on black, who film are you going to? Just the death of our campaign? Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't supposed to be doing this. Uh, Good. I want you Sharima to was supposed to uh, uh, do the interview. I feel comfortable with you. Cameras two and three. What camera you want me to look in? Uh, you'll talk to me until I tell you to look at a camera. Okay. And I'll give you that uh, warning. Which camera you want me to look to when you tell me? Oh, it'll be that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, open clock. Your phone's on vibrator off, mm -hmm. please. Reset, stand by. Stand by. We're in black. Coming live in five, four, three, two. All right. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. This evening, I've got some more guests for you. Um, I don't know if this is a standalone show or add on show, but I'm sure you're getting a lot of information. We've spoken with at least three, four, five of the running council candidates and we hope to talk to more. We want to encourage you to not only share the information that you see in this program, but when you go to the polls, make sure you don't take an empty car. Fill it up. Take your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, your brother. We need you to vote. All right? With that said, I've got a young man here today running for third ward? Yes. Third ward? Yes. And his brother, Quincy Murphy. Uh, Quincy, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Good evening. Thank you for having me today. And, um, mm -hmm. Thank the listening audience for um, tuning in okay. to this um, show. Um, I've been in politics ever since the late Johnny Tucker was um, elected councilman. I worked with him, um, ran against him, lost, um, ran against Johnny Tucker, lost, ran against Johnny, I mean, um, Brian Nolden, um, and Kerry Nelson, you name it. I ran against all of them, not just because I wanted to run for office, um, because I wanted to be into politics, but I wanted to make a difference in the third ward. If you look at the community, a lot of residents in the third ward, a lot of residents in the city of Flint, predominantly in the urban community, has um, watched the neighborhood deteriorate over the last 30 years. And as a result of us keep on electing the same um, politician and name recognition, and as a result, we gotten anything. Our neighborhood looked disaster. Got abandoned houses, vacant lots high grass every year we go through the same thing and it seems like there's nothing getting done to address these issues um as you know i attend city council all the time mm -hmm. since attend committee meetings speak at city council all the time people may see me on channel 17 on, at the, on the city council speaking right. mm -hmm. it's almost like i'm speaking to a uh, brick wall nothing is getting done nothing is being changed not only am i speaking at city council i'm out in the community working in the community, so I'm not just someone going out to city council um, speaking and not working in the community. Over the last 20 years, I've done um, a lot of great things in the third ward in the city of Flint, such as serving on the facilities committee for the school district. Um, I'm presently on the MTA board mm -hmm. and um, formerly an NAACP elected board member, um, spearheaded the Garfield Bunch Community School getting boarded up. Um, been working with the Genesee County Cleaning Green Program, working with St. John Evangelistic Work Camp. Man, you got really, you got, so I don't forgot what my question was. I what know. was my question? Uh, um, Tell me a little bit about yourself, wasn't right. it? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm giving you the rundown. <laughs> all right, all right, go, yeah, keep yeah. going, so, man, keep going. You know, um, when the emergency manager came in place, um, they started cutting programming and services for the city. One of the things was I, I did was uh, work with the community group and mm took on the uh, responsibility of mowing and maintaining Dewey Park, um, free of cost, volunteering, um, putting in my hours and uh, money to 
rent lawnmowers to cut and mm -hmm. bring residents and volunteers together. To, didn't know how we was going to make it happen, but um, by the grace of God, we was able to make things happen. And since then, we've got a we recently got a grant this year mm -hmm. for ten thousand dollars to restore uh, the South Side basketball court. And as we speak, we in negotiation with um, securing this grant for twenty five thousand dollars that was just awarded to us right. to do all the other courts. Give me a give me a short answer. Uh, Why is Quincy running for city council? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a short answer. I am tired of the bickering and fussing downtown, the back and forth, the uh, lack of uh, inspiration for our elected leaders to want to do more than just Mondays and Wednesdays going down to city council. We need y'all out trying to build capacity with the different neighborhood groups and the churches and the businesses that's uh, within the uh, third ward mm -hmm. to make a difference. We, we, we don't have no one that we feel like we can go to and be like, what can we do to uh, work together to make a difference? They not working with us. They don't hear us. And we tired of them going back and forth. Um, not working with the mayor and administration or the mayor and administration not working with city council. There's some way, somehow, they need to come up with a medium in order to uh, collectively work together to make a difference in the community, and that's not happening. Give me three things that you think really need to be addressed at the city council. Just three things that, that, that you feel they need to address and address quickly. They need to address, first of all, um, diplomacy, um, respecting one another, their colleagues, talking to each other um, in a, a respectful manner. And the other one is to go along and get along. Um, the five five or the five six, um, you know, just voting against the mayor and administration just because. Um, or to go along and get along just because they want to... Um, please the mayor and administration. We tired of that. We want what's best for the community. Um, another thing I think is um, important need to be addressed when we come down to city council, which as you see, there's not a lot of people coming down there. So we almost the voice of the voiceless when we come down there because we are consistent, we persistent, and we keep coming despite nothing not getting done. So when we come, we come in because we're concerned about our community, not because we don't have nothing to do. A lot of us have other lives that we're doing outside of just coming to city council. Mm -hmm. We ain't just coming because we want to just come. And when we come and um, hit the podium and speak, it seems like it go in one ear and come out the other. I know you're there on a regular basis. How... How do you handle conflict? I mean, there are going to be the Eric Mazes and the Kate Fields and the Jackie Poplars and the Vicky Van Burens and the Scott Kincaid's on the council with you. How will you handle conflict? You win some and you lose some. And um, I'm a uh, charter commissioner, too, for the city of Flint, which we uh, vote yes for the city charter. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to throw that out there. But um, being part of the um, Charter Commission, there were some days that um, I brought issues up that I felt needed to be part of the Charter, but I didn't win that fight, that battle. But we moved on and continued to work together on things that we could agree with. And I think that's the same thing with the City Council and the Mayor. Find three issues that you all can um, agree on and work at it to the best of your ability. Also, I think they need to do some breaking the ice. They need to do some retreats with the mayor and administration and the city council um, because there's so much um, divide where they need to get past that. Maybe they need to go out on a, um, a cruise or something or, yeah, together. A yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the retreat well, is got something. Open Meeting Act yeah. rules that don't, won't allow that. They can only go two at a time. Well, think, take two right? at a time and y'all go somewhere and get it together until y'all come up with let's try to get along for, for the best interests of the constituents. Would We're you gonna, support a, a parliamentarian perhaps running the meeting? Oh, yes. Hiring a third oh, yes. party I to, think that to, needs to set happen. in that seat? Yes. That needs to happen until they get some order because right now they don't have no order. Talk to me about uh, 
the water lanes. Where are you on the water lanes? Well, um, I was one of the 8,000 residents that um, received a water lane. I was one of many residents, not knowing how many out there, that went down there and paid the 10% and made payment arrangements mm -hmm. um, prior to me getting the um, notification that a lien would be placed on my house. Mm -hmm. And since I made those arrangements, I've um, honored those arrangements and been paying my arrangement. Mm -hmm. And despite that, um, still got a water lien. So I filed a lawsuit against the city of Flint on behalf of that. Not that I didn't want to pay, that I felt like, why would you put a water lien on my property when um, I made payment arrangements? And I call it regentrification. I think it's a ploy to get people to move out. Okay. Uh, understanding that that's a, a possibility, that they are trying to uh, gentrify mm -hmm. this city of Flint. How is Quincy going to handle that? Are you going to go with the flow, or are you, you going to fight that? Well, I've been fighting since the Civil Rights Commission came in to the city of Flint. I'm glad you brought that issue up. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of um, a small few of residents who spoke at the Civil Rights Commission hearing about the um, unjust that the residents of the city of Flint was going through during this water crisis. I also um, traveled to Washington, D.C. to a couple of rallies, went down there when Governor Snyder was um, testifying on the hearing. Mm -hmm. um, right. I also went to Lansing and all the little protest marching that we've done over the past years, marched in the city of Flint in the cold and the hot, you name it, I was out there. Um, also um, orchestrated and authored the um, language to file recall language on the governor uh, because I felt like he was at fault at all of this by even bringing in the emergency manager for the city of Flint. And because of the lack of um, accountability we have allowed this governor to come in and um, destroy our community and cause our community way more than if you to just let Dane Wallen, the former mayor, um, borrow the $20 million stabilization bond that he asked to apply for to cover the deficit prior to the emergency manager coming in. And that's what got us in the situation that we're in now. All right, now I know that you uh, witnessed the city council vote in the recent Comcast contract. Is that something you would have supported and would you have allowed for the capital equipment fund or is that something that, that doesn't interest you? Well, um, yes, it do interest me. and um, It was unfortunate that you wasn't in a charter commission when we was talking about the franchise agreement that we tried to put in place with the charter commission to um, protect issues. I really felt like you were the um, father of um, the Comcast um, deal, and I felt like they um, ignored uh, your plea to um, negotiate what could really happen, being that that's your expertise. Mm -hmm. So if I'm running for city councilman, that don't mean I know how to be an electrician or a plumber. Right. There, I, I need to stay in my lane, and that's what experts are here. And I feel like you're an expert in what needed to happen, and they should have let you broker that deal. So it was disappointing that they allowed that to happen without um, more input from you. Nice. Good answer, as I say. Good answer. Good answer. All right. It's election day. Yes. What are you telling people to get them motivated about voting in itself? You know, we've got a dismal voting record here in the city of Flint. 1,600 in my ward. 78, 83, 94 voters. How do we turn that apathy in, in, into votes? Well, at this point in time, had I not ran for city councilman, there would have been a lot of disappointing people because they, they was like, we ain't got nobody to vote for. So um, one of the reasons why um, I decided to run for city council because I wanted to give people another option. Um, we keep voting for the same people and getting the same results. You know what you're going to get. You saw what they do now. So if you please, that when you look out your door and those vacant lots and those vacant houses and those broken up sidewalks and people ain't fighting downtown for that, then that's what you get for keep voting for the same people getting the same results. You want change? You want somebody to go down there and fight? For the community, I think I'm the choice that you need. I have to go along and get along. All right. Well, while you're on a roll, okay. what I want you to do is look at the camera in the last couple of minutes and convince these people not only to vote for you, but maybe to help you with signs, with uh, phone calls, whatever you need. 
this is your time to shine. Thank you. Thank you all for um, listening in. Hopefully I have said it, something to um, spark a nerve to make you think about um, this election coming up August the 8th. Um, I've been working in the community for a long time, have helped bring millions of dollars to the city of Flint through um, collecting data for the um, hardest hit funds to uh, boarding up houses in the community to more than maintaining vacant lots through the Clean and Green program. I know um, the issues in the community have attended uh, majority of the city council meetings when I can attend the city um, committee meetings. I've been working in this community for years. Even when I ran for office and lost, I stayed in a race. I did not leave. I'm asking you to give me a chance to represent you in the third ward and for the city of Flint. Give me a chance to go in and show you that um, not only have I been working in the community, that I can work for you. Thank you. Vote Quincy Murphy, August 8th, 2017. God bless you. Give out a phone number. Give out an email. 810-308-4862. That's 810-308-4862. And my email address is murphyquincy73 at yahoo.com. murphyquincy73 at yahoo.com. Come on out. Help me. Uh, work in the community and uh, work these polls and um, door knock and get some people to vote Quincy Murphy, August 8th, 2017. Thank you and God bless. All right. Thanks, Quincy. Listen, guys, you're watching Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. I need to give a shout out to uh, Local 370, the Pipe Fitters Union. They help support this program, and you can too, by giving us a call at 810-239-2901. That's 810-239-2901. We are determined to make a difference, but we're going to need your assistance to make that happen. Make sure that you tell a friend that you saw it here on Meet the Candidates, and as always, vote. There'll be more after this. Clear? You're done.